So I've done this in a short style video before, but I wanted to start regrading past NBA drafts. You guys know that I redraft these drafts and I've also reacted to my draft night initial grading of these classes. So today for 2022 since 2023 is I think still a little too recent. We're gonna go throughout this draft and regrade these first round draft picks. Have they aged well or are they not looking too hot? If you guys enjoyed these style videos and wanna see more of this, drop a thumbs up, let me know and I'll do 2021 pretty soon. Also shout out to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring today's video more about them later. Great time to download their app for March Madness. All right, first up, we got the Orlando Magic. They selected Paolo Bancaro. And I think it's still impressive because Paolo Bancaro was not a consensus number one overall pick. I think if you look at other draft classes like Wemby in 2023, Cade in 2021, Zion in 2019, these guys were pretty much all locks to go number one. Paolo wasn't really a lock to go number one until draft day because a lot of people thought it was going to be Jabari Smith Jr. I think objectively, Paolo Bancaro has been the best player from this draft class. He was on the FIBA World Cup team last summer. He's averaging 23 points, seven rebounds, and five assists as a sophomore. Shooting 47% from the field, 37% from three. It's looking like the Orlando Magic are going to be a playoff team this year as well with him as their best player. And if you took the best player in the class and it makes it even more impressive that he wasn't unlocked to go number one until draft day. Yeah, that's an A plus from me. Shout out to the Orlando Magic. Don't listen to anybody else when they say you didn't get like a true number one pick here. You did. So the OKC Thunder selected Chet Holmgren at number two. It was pretty much kind of given that he was going to fall to because the Magic were between Paolo and Jabari. So there was a world that Paolo ended up falling to three, but the Thunder took Chet Holmgren to number two, didn't play a single game in his rookie season, got hurt in a pro-am game basically before the season even started, was out through the whole year. I mean, there was definitely some question marks with his frame, his size, is he too skinny? But his first year in the NBA, 68 games this year, been fully healthy. He has been just one of the best big men in this league. And his true rookie season at 21 years old, he's averaging 17 points, eight rebounds, and three assists tonight. Oh yeah, he's also shooting 39% from three, overall 54% from the field, two and a half blocks a night, and is one of the most important players on one of the best teams in the NBA overall, and the current one seed in the Western Conference in the OKC Thunder. Yeah, it's an A-plus for me. Job well done, OKC. Coming into number three, we have the Houston Rockets. They selected Jabari Smith Jr. Definitely kind of the least valuable out of the top three. Like, you definitely have Chad or Paolo, at least right now and going forward. But I think also we all knew coming out of Auburn that Jabari Smith was going to take a little bit more time to develop and get acclimated to the NBA level. I mean, he was in a terrible environment in his rookie season under Steven Silas. The Houston Rockets were an absolute mess last year. They had no leadership, no veterans at all on this team. And he has taken some steps this year for Houston, averaging 13 and a half points, eight and a half rebounds, gets over assist tonight as well, shooting 46% from the field and a very encouraging 36% from three and 82% from the line. So that makes me think that he's going to be a good shooter in this league for years to come. He's been playing very well as of late. I'm going to give this pick an A minus because I'm still very high on Jabari Smith. He was my number two player in this class originally. And like I said, it was a more long-term draft pick. So as long as they keep prioritizing his development and they don't put that on the back burner, he's going to be a really good player. At number four, the Sacramento Kings, I think shocked some people when they took Keegan Murray. Some people thought that they were going to take Jaden Ivey, including me. So they ended up going with Keegan Murray, a little bit of an older prospect coming out of Iowa is already 23 years old. Had a very solid rookie season, averaging north of 12 points. And he shot 41% from three on six attempts a night and was playing meaningful minutes for a playoff. Off Sacramento Kings team. So I'm going to give this an A minus just because you know what? They went against what the consensus told them to do and take Jaden Ivey and they took their guy, Keegan Murray. Has taken some steps from year one to year two, but you'd like him to improve a little bit more as the three point percentage has fallen a decent amount, going from 41% last year to 35% this year. The defense has improved. So I think just a strong rookie season and a solid year two is going to earn the A minus grade. But if that three point shot doesn't really go back up next year and he doesn't really develop too much playmaking ability, that grade could definitely drop in future regrading videos. So like Jabari Smith Jr., Jaden Ivey was in a terrible situation pretty much in his rookie year. The Detroit Pistons were not a winning team at all last year. And even this year, they've been a mess. Like Monty Williams has opted not to play him at times. And it's been a rocky and up and down year two for the former Purdue Boilermaker. And I'm going to give this grade a B right now because I thought Ivey would be a little bit better. He was my third ranked prospect in this draft originally. His points have gone down this year. The field goal percentage has gone up, but the three point shot has gone down, which has always been kind of a question mark with Ivy was a thing with him at Purdue. The playmaking has also kind of gone down as well. And there's definitely some inconsistent times with this game. He's currently on a cold stretch right now um, in the middle to end of March. We saw him have multiple hot stretches this year as well. And like I said, it's been a weird year with him under Monty Williams. And I don't think that they're doing a great job prioritizing his development either. So we got Benedict Matherin going to the Pacers at number six. I'm going to give this a B plus. To be honest, I thought Matherin was a little bit overrated out of his rookie season, but I didn't 
expect this three-point jump from his game. So it's nice to see him go from 32% from three to 37% as a sophomore. Unfortunately, he is missing the rest of the 2024 season with season-ending shoulder surgery. You'd like for the playmaking to be a little bit better, maybe the defense going forward, but as a like secondary shot creator off the bench and someone that's still just 21 years old, I think was a very good pick from Indiana. You want to talk about potential. So the Portland Trailblazers selected Shaden Sharp at number seven. I'm going to give this an A-. minus. I was a huge fan of this pick originally because Shaden Sharp did not play collegiate basketball. He pretty much went from high school to the NBA because he was ineligible at some points for Kentucky and Calipari really didn't want to play him to mess up that teammate chemistry in the second half of that season. So he pretty much went from high school to the NBA, averaged 10 points as a rookie on what felt like a tanking Portland Trailblazers team. This year though, the Trailblazers have not been good, but he's averaging 16 points five rebounds and three assists. The efficiency though has definitely taken a hit, but he's been dealing with multiple injuries this year, but he's still 20 years old. 20 years old. We saw enough flashes last year and the beginning of this season. It makes me think this is still going to be a very good pick for the Blazers at seven. So the Pelicans took Dyson Daniels at number eight. I was a big fan of this pick originally. I'm giving it a C though so far. It's not really been working out. Now I knew he was going to be a good defender and he has been. So that C is pretty much off the defense alone because the offense has not been pretty whatsoever. He has not been efficient. The outside shot has looked horrible so far. I don't really know what position he's going to be because I don't know if he's going to have enough playmaking ability to be a lead guard in this league. Can he be an off ball player probably not with his outside jumper right now so he's pretty much a defender right now and if he doesn't develop an outside shot like this grade is probably going to say to C. maybe he could go down but if he can create a shot in year three because it looks like he's going to be out for a little bit this year this grade can go up coming in at number nine the san antonio spurs selected jeremy shohan it's going to get a b minus for me he's a solid rebounder a solid passer the outside shot isn't great you know and his free throw percentage has improved which is good to see but the shot does not look good right now he has the hitch in his game that i hope he can continue to work on. I mean, I don't think Pop did him any service trying to play him at point guard this year because that did not go all too well. I think the defense potential is still there, but I think we have seen some improvements from his jumper from year one to year two. So I'm going to give it a B minus. This could be a little bit harsh. It could be conservative. You can let me know. So coming in at number 10, we have a good old fashioned, possibly B word. It's going to be Johnny Davis who went to the Wizards. It's crazy. Like Johnny Davis is still getting some playing time because the Wizards made a lot of trades this year and have had a lot of injured players. And you know what he's doing in that playing time? Two and a half points, one and a half rebounds shooting 34% from the field and 23% from three. The defense isn't there. He's already 22 years old. His numbers have gone down across the board from last year. I did not see this at Wisconsin. I thought it would be a fine player. I thought it was a fine pick. This is looking like he could be that B word, which stands for bust. So I'm going to give this an F right now. So the Thunder traded up with the Knicks to select Usman Jang at number 11. I don't know if this is going to be controversial at all, but I'm going to give this a C minus. Now it's because I wasn't a huge fan of Usman Jang coming into the 2022 draft and I know he's supposed to be a long-term play. I just don't know if he's ever going to develop on this OKC Thunder team and what other team will take the chance on him because this Thunder team is good right now. They're going to add some other draft picks in 2024 and in 2025. They may have some cap space, some roster flexibility to add some other guys in the offseason. So Zhang is only playing 11 minutes a night this year. I don't know how much it's going to go up next year and years forward. I actually think he could have somewhat of an outside jumper and that's kind of holding this back from potentially being in that deep. But don't worry, OKC, you had back-to-back -back picks and you selected... Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara. I don't know if this was possible, but I'm giving this an A plus plus. Yeah, what a phenomenal pick, especially because a lot of people were like, who on draft name? Like I knew a little bit about Jalen Williams, but I wasn't watching a ton of Santa Clara in that collegiate season. And they went out, they drafted an absolute stud with the 12th overall pick. Someone that's improved so much as a defender from year one to year two. Someone that's gone from 14 points a game as a rookie to 19 points per game as a sophomore. He finished second in rookie of the year voting last year. He's shooting 54% from the field, 44% from three, 82% from the line. He's a really good playmaker as well. And he's arguably the second most important player behind Shea on this one seed OKC Thunder team. Yeah, Sam Presti hit it out of the ballpark with this pick, getting Chad Holmgren and Jalen Williams in this lottery. What a job by the Thunder general manager. We have back-to-back -back Jalen's here. So we had the Detroit Pistons selecting Jalen Duran at number 13. They traded up kind of with Charlotte to get this pick here. And I'm going to give this an A. I'm a big fan of Jalen Duran. I liked him a lot pre-draft. So I really like this pick originally for the Pistons. And I think he's probably the second best center in this draft. I think he's better than guys like Mark Williams. And I will say Walker Kessler. I do like Duran a little bit more than Walker Kessler. Someone that's a bruiser inside, physical. I'm excited to see him hopefully on some winning Pistons teams too 
too because I actually think he could be the long-term answer at the five. 14 points, 12 rebounds a night this year in 54 games. He's dealt with some injuries in the first two years of his career, but I think the Pistons found their long-term center to be alongside their franchise player in Kate Cunningham. I did like Oshay Baji a decent amount coming out of Kansas, and unfortunately, I'm going to give this a C+. He was originally drafted by the Cavs, but was traded before his career even started in the Donovan Mitchell trade. He didn't really work out too much in Utah, had a solid rookie year, but kind of went downhill this year and then ended up getting traded to Toronto where he has not been great so far. The efficiency hasn't been good. And you know, if you're not really producing out of the gate, it's tough for these upperclassmen because he's already 23 years old. So I'm going to give him a C plus right now because I still think he could be a scoring wing and I'm still high on him individually, but he has not been good so far. Before we get back into the video, I want to give a word from today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is by far the easiest way to play fantasy sports. If I'm either going to a game, watching a game with friends, or maybe it's just a random night that I want to make the game that I'm watching a little bit more interesting, I will use Underdog Fantasy. And my favorite part about Underdog Fantasy is their Pick'em game. So you go to the Pick'em tab basically on the Underdog website or app, and you pick whether players will have a higher or lower stat total in that game for a chance to win big. You can pick between two to five players in your Pick'em entry, and you can win up to 20 times your money on a single game if you get all your picks right. Also, another amazing thing that Underdog Fantasy does for you new customers that use my link in the description is you can get the new customer special. So basically, it could be somebody like Steph Curry, Luka Doncic, or Nikola Jokic. And you just have to say that they're going to get higher than 0.5 points on the night that they're playing. New customers also get a 100% deposit match up to $100 with my link in the description and use code SROS. That's S-R-O-S. That's a 100% deposit match up to $100. That's a no-brainer. Use my code SROS and please, like always, remember to play responsibly. And thank you to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring today's video. All right, so next up at number 15, the first pick outside the lottery, the Charlotte Hornets selected Mark Williams. I'm going to give this a B plus. Williams hasn't played since December this year. He may only play 19 games in year two. He did not play well in the first half of his rookie season, but really came along in the second half of it. So we don't have too much of a sample size in Mark Williams' career so far. But I do think that the Charlotte Hornets made a phenomenal pick, and that's why I'm giving it a B plus. I don't think he's as good as like Jalen Duran, but he's right there. He's a serviceable big man. He can rebound. He can score inside. He can run the pick and roll with Lamella Ball. I would just like to see them both fully healthy for at least maybe 70, 65 games next year. That'd be nice. At 16, Atlanta took AJ Griffin, man. What the hell happened to him? I love this pick out of Duke. He had a really good rookie season. He was super efficient. 47% from the field, 39% from three, almost 90% from the line. I really saw some great three and D potential as a complimentary piece to Trey Young going forward, but there's been some off the court stuff this year. He's dealt with a leg and ankle injury. He's really only appeared in 18 games, averaging seven minutes a night, shooting 28% from the field and scoring two points a game. Yeah, what happened to AJ Griffin, man? Like that rookie season alone would have been an A for me, but now I got to drop it to a C plus and I'm getting scared it's going to drop even more. The Rockets selected Tari Eason out of LSU at number 17. I'm going to give this a B plus. I was a big fan of Eason. Coming out of LSU, somebody that's a hustle player, high motor, can rebound, can run the floor, can be a good defender as well. He has dealt with injuries this year, which has been kind of like a model for a lot of these guys. So far in their careers, only playing 22 games this year, but he did play in all 82 games last year and looked great in a dysfunctional Rockets team. So I'm excited to see him hopefully fully healthy next year in year two under Ime Odoka. So the Chicago Bulls selected Dale and Terry out of Arizona at 18. I wasn't a huge fan of this pick when it happened. So I'm going to give it a D plus because he hasn't really done much so far. He's 21 years old. He's averaging two and a half points for a fringe play in tournament Bulls team, shooting 39% from the field and 24% from three. I don't know if he's ever going to be good enough on the defensive side of the floor to really be valuable as a rotational guy in this league going forward on a good team. I also don't think he's ever going to develop his outside jumper whatsoever. It doesn't look great. The track record doesn't show that it will. So yeah, I'm still not a fan of Dale and Terry. It's going to get a D plus for me. So at 19, Minnesota selected Jake Oravia out of Wake Forest. I'm giving it a C minus. He was not great in his rookie season whatsoever. And even with all the injuries that the Grizzlies have had this year, he hasn't really taken too much of an opportunity with the much more expanded role. He's averaging eight points, three and a half rebounds. He's a fine free throw shooter, 35% from the field, 27% from three. Yeah, he may score in double figures, but he's not shooting the ball all that well. So I'm afraid he's not even going to be in the rotation next year or too much going forward. I'm giving it a C minus because there are some flashes, but it's not looking good for him. I loved when the Spurs took Malachi Branham originally. I really liked him a ton out of Ohio State. He's definitely not lived up to my expectations so far. I'm going to give it a C plus because I do think the offensive potential is there. He averaged around 10 points as a rookie, nine points this year as a sophomore, but 
the three-point shot is getting better. 30% as a rookie, 34% this year, but he's an elite free throw shooter too. He could shoot 90 plus percent from the line. So that gives me some hope that his jumper will eventually fall. He's still only 20 years old, and I think he'll still have chance to grow in year three with San Antonio. So it's like an optimistic C+. At number 21, Denver took Christian Brown. He was a big part of their championship run last year as a rookie out of Kansas. Ended up being better of the two between him and Oshie Baji. So I'm going to give it an A-. minus. And the fact that he went at 21, like he's not a flashy player by any means. He's never going to be an all-NBA caliber player. But just the fact that the Nuggets found a really good role player at 21 this late in the first round and he contributed on a championship team. Yeah, that's going to earn you an A-. minus. That's going to be a good grade. Someone that's a good three-point shooter, a good defender, really good in transition, good ball handler, is not going to turn the ball over a lot. That's very valuable when you're drafting in the mid to late first round. So Minnesota technically took Walker Kessler at 22 and then shipped him off in the Rudy Gobert trade to Utah. I'm going to give this an A- minus for sure. I mean, Kessler was phenomenal as a rookie, finished third in Rookie of the Year. He was on Team USA in the FIBA World Cup last year, but he has taken some steps back this year in year number two in the NBA. His efficiency has dropped off a little bit. The rebounding isn't there. The defense looks like it's still kind of there at times, but it definitely doesn't seem like he's as impactful as he was as a rookie, but still a really good player. And the fact that they got him at 22 and obviously Utah acquired him in the Gobert trade was phenomenal by them. So you're still getting a really good grade of an A-. At 23, Memphis selected David Roddy out of Colorado State. This is getting a D plus from me. Like Jake Arabia, I was not a fan of this pick either. I really wasn't a fan of Memphis's, which is like a pretty good drafting team. Like in their 2022 draft, I didn't really like it at all. They already moved David Roddy to Phoenix, but he's only appeared really in 12 games and he doesn't really play all that much for them. And I'm afraid after the rookie contract, he may not have a rotational spot in the NBA going forward. Not a good job by Zach Kleeman in the Memphis front office. Milwaukee took Marjan Beauchamp at 24. I'm going to give this a B. I really like Beauchamp a ton. I mean, Adrian Griffin definitely did not prioritize his development in year two. And I wouldn't say that Doc Rivers has either because he is somebody that was a perfect 3 and D guy for this Bucks team to come off the bench. And I know he's a younger player to a more veteran roster, but still, they're kind of throwing his development prioritization out the window this year, which is a shame because I still think he's a good player. I think he could be a valuable 3D guy in the league one day. Well, I like the Spurs later two first round picks more than Sohan. Like, I loved Blake Wesley too at pick number 25 out of Notre Dame, and he has shown some flashes in year number two, but on a relative scale to the rest of the first round picks that I'm grading here, I gotta give it a C-. minus. The three-point shot has not been falling at all in year number two. I still think he has solid playmaking ability, and he could be a back a point guard going forward, but he's definitely going to have to work on that outside jumper. So Minnesota ended up with two first round picks here. They originally got Walker Kessler at 22. Like I said, he was in the Rudy Gobert trade. And then they got Wendell Moore at 26. But yeah, it has not worked out whatsoever. So I may be harsh here, but I'm going to give it an F. And I liked Wendell Moore coming at a dude too. I thought he could be like a crafty scorer off the bench for a really good team later in the first round. And that was a perfect destination with him in Minnesota. But the opportunity really hasn't been there for him. Last year, five minutes a night. This year, three minutes a night. He's a appeared in the last couple of games for the Timberwolves because they've had a couple injuries going on right now. But if he's not really showing up in practice or workouts with the team, that doesn't really give me much encouragement that he's ever going to play for them in meaningful minutes. So yeah, it's an F. Somebody that was going to be a project long-term play was Nikola Jovic going to the Heat at 27. And Jovic has been really good so far in year number two as a 20-year-old. I mean, coming over from Europe to Miami has to be some transition for a 19-year-old, right? Like you're not going to be able to fit in right away. And he showed some flashes as a rookie, but you know, at the Heat were a championship team last year. They went to the NBA finals. It was going to be tough from the crack the rotation, but he's also been a very good three-point shooter for the Heat this year off the bench, and it's provided them some valuable playing time as a 20-year-old guy in the second unit. So yeah, B-plus for me. Good job, Miami. At 28, Golden State took Patrick Baldwin Jr. out of Milwaukee. He was later in like the Jordan Poole, Chris Paul trades. You would think as a 21-year-old in Washington, one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in the league this year, he would do something. Well, he really hasn't. 10 minutes a night, averaging three points per game, just kind of looks lost out there at times, and he was once a top high school prospect. I'm just going to give up hope on him. I'm giving this an F. Somebody I also don't want to give up on yet was Ty Ty Washington. I just like a Kentucky guard. I thought he was going to be really good. I thought he was going to be a fringe lottery pick. He went to Houston here at 29 and has not really done much in the league. He's currently on the Milwaukee Bucks, averaging less than a point per game in four minutes a night. And he's not going to play for Milwaukee. Who knows? He could still be good going forward. I'm going to give it an F though. And at 30, Denver surprised everybody when they took Peyton Watson. I was kind of shocked he went into this draft because he didn't do anything at UCLA the year prior. But it looks like the Nuggets did a very good job selecting him at 30, let him develop as a rookie, not really playing as much. But in year two, he's provided them some valuable playing time off the bench, seven points a night, 
three rebounds, good field goal percentage, can hustle, can rebound, can defend a little bit, and could be a rotational piece for Denver going forward. There was obviously some very good second round picks as well, like Andrew Nemhard, Caleb Houston, Jalen Williams, Max Christie, Jaden Hardy, and Vince Williams. That makes some of those late first round picks that I gave Fs to, like Wendell Moore, Patrick Baldwin, and Ty Ty Washington, look a little bit worse when you could have gotten some of those guys on a four year rookie contract. So, yeah, that's gonna be for me. I hope you guys did enjoy. Drop a thumbs up if you did. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with any of these grades. And also, let me know if you guys wanna see me do this with 2021 as well, and then we can keep going backwards. So, yeah, thank you all for watching. I love you guys. Make sure you check out the podcast. Link in the description. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.